morning, good morning, good morning. We here at Grace Missionary Baptist Church want to be with the name of the Lord. Timothy J. Collins is our pastor, and we are so glad that you have chosen to worship with us today as we welcome the Lord's presence. If this is your first time, we pray that it won't be your last. We thank God for allowing us to assemble ourselves face to face here in our temporary meeting place, home to suites, located at 2123 Interstate 20, Grand Prairie, Texas. 75052. You are welcome to join us each and every Sunday, probably at 10 a.m. While we would love to see you in this place, we understand that some of you are social distancing are just not able to physically attend in this instance. We will continue to broadcast live via Facebook and YouTube Sunday at 10 a.m. We solicit our prayers for for not only the names displayed at the bottom of the screen, but for the children this nation and the universal church if you are in need of prayer or have a desire to be saved or are looking for a church home there are two numbers displayed at the bottom of your screen please do not hesitate to call if you reach voicemail someone will return your call promptly we appreciate you we thank you we love you and we welcome you in jesus name amen we will now have a word of prayer from our pastor thank you Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, and praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. This is the day that the Lord have made. The psalmist says, I will rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Anybody feel like giving God some glory this morning? Amen. <laughs> giving him the praise and the honor that he's so right deserve. Amen. What a blessing it is. What a privilege it is for us to be able to gather together on this day. Amen. That the Lord has blessed us to see. Amen. I hope we all realize it. It wasn't promised, amen, to us for this day, amen. It's not by luck or circumstance, circumstance that we are here today, amen, but it's by the grace of God, amen, that he's allowed us to arise to see this day, amen. For our reading this morning, I want to call your attention to the 100 number of Psalms, amen. And the 100 number of Psalms, it reads, Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness, come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God, it is he that hath made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. Why? Because for the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting and his truth endured to all generations. Amen. That was the 100th number of Psalms and its entirety. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we bless your holy name this morning as we give thanks unto thee, O God, for all that thou hast done and continues to do, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for the morning glory that we felt this morning, Lord, your presence. Thank you for allowing us traveling grace here to arrive here safely this morning. We are grateful for those who may be viewing online today, God. We just lift up praise and glory and glorify your name this morning, oh God, as we exalt thee and remove self now, God. Lord, we stand before thee, oh God, with our heads bowed, Lord, as empty vessels desiring for you to fill us up. Just move in us today, Lord, and have your way, God. You know, Lord, every individual need in here. You know the concerns and desires of our heart, Lord. Overall, our desire, Lord, is to be drawing closer to you, Lord. Now, touch, oh, Lord, right now, everyone in here, the prayers that are being lifted up right now, the things on our thoughts and our hearts and our minds, not only for ourselves, but loved ones here and abroad, Lord, as we think about those who are in Ukraine today, Lord, where innocent blood is being shared, those in Turkey, Lord, the devastation that happened there, Lord, and even here locally, Lord, where lives are still being taken, Lord, each day, Lord. Father, we lift these concerns up to you right now, Lord, that thou would strengthen us, O oh God, cause us to continue to focus, O oh Lord, on what you've called us out to do. We're grateful, Lord, that we can come to you, Lord, 
for the word tells us, oh God, that uh, in your presence, Lord, there is uh, there is grace for us, oh God. There's strength for us, oh God, in your presence, oh God. There is joy forevermore, God. And at your right hand, there is pleasures evermore. God, just have your way, Lord. Fill our hearts today, Lord, with gladness today. Touch us by the word of truth today, Lord. Touch us by, Lord, in song, Lord, in praise and worship to you, O oh God. And that our hearts and our minds, O oh God, may be released, O oh God. And, and, and lift up your name in here today, God. Those who are sitting at home, they may join in on the praise, O oh God. And that our humble may be here thereof and be glad of it, O oh God. To know that you are a redeemer, you are a restorer, you are a renewer, oh God. Thank you for all that you have done, Lord. Thank you, Father. We ask now for forgiveness, Lord, for all of our sins, oh God. As you, Lord Jesus, stand uh, to the right hand of the Father, interceding on our guilty behalf today. We ask for forgiveness, Lord, for the error of our ways, oh God. Cleanse us now, Lord, of all of our unrighteousness, Lord. We that's right now. We plead your blood upon us, Lord, to touch us, saturate us today. That when we leave out of here today, Lord, we may be revived, renewed, restored, and be better, Lord, than we arrived in here on today. Lord, we have been touched by the truth. And we are grateful for all that you have done as we believe now, Lord, for healing, Lord. We believe in you, God, for deliverance today. We believe in you, Lord, for a lost soul to be saved and those who are saved, that they may return unto your God. We believe in you for it today, God. And these things we ask now humbly, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ and all the saints of God said, amen. 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 As we stand on our feet. Amen. Come on. Let's love on him. Amen. Today as we stand on our feet. Amen. And welcome his presence into this place. Amen. Okay. Yes, we have some uh, uh, some words back here on the table. If nobody if somebody needs one, we want to do uh, our, our Negro National Anthem. If you need a, uh, some words, lift your hands. We'll get some to you. Amen. We want to do lift every voice and sing as we close out now this Black History or African American Heritage Month. Amen. We want to lift our voice. Amen. And sing. We will do all three or you just want to do one? We're going to do one all three? Yeah. Oh, I'm you may okay. <laughs> all right. All right. Let's do the first one. All right. All right. All right. says lift every voice and sing till the earth and heaven ring not only that but ring with the harmony of liberty everybody under the sound of my voice help me sing lift lift every voice and sing till earth and heaven ring ring with the harmony of Rejoicing, let our rejoicing rise. High is the listening sky. Let us march, let us sound loud, loud as the rolling sea. This is the part we all can sing. Sing a song. Sing a song full of the faith that the darkness has taught. Sing. Verse 2, all together, verse 2. So be the road we try, speak at the chastening rock, held in the day's wake of God, God, and God, if it's a steady thing, as God are we. 
continues, but let's give God praise for bringing us this far. Amen. And as we remember our history and those who've gone on before, I can remember old folks saying, can we just do one line of this? We should sing. We come this far by faith. Remember the choir used to walk in on this one. Leaning on the Lord. But you know what? We we want to give respect and homage to those people who've gone on before. I don't know if you know it or not, but we are standing on the shoulders of some pretty good folk. And if those songs got them through and they were good enough for them, they're good enough for me. Amen. Amen. to do everything that he said he would do. And he's going to fulfill every promise to you. In the meantime, don't give up on God. You know why? Because he'll never, never, ever give up on you. Why? Because he's able. Come on, if, he, if he's able, look at your neighbor and say, I know that he's able. If you have a testimony, look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I have proof. And he's able. All right, all together, let's just go to the top. God is able. God is able to do just what he said he would do. He's going to fulfill every promise to you. Don't give up on God. Don't give up on God. Because he won't give up. On you, why is he's able? Clap those hands, clap those hands, clap those hands, clap those hands. He's able. Oh, 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 oh. come on. God is able to, is able to just what he said, just what he said. He would do. He's gonna fulfill. Clap those hands and give me praise. Clap those hands today. He's able. 
You may be seated in his awesome master's presence. I don't know about you, but if I'm fair about it, and I consider all of the grace and the mercy that I personally have been extended. Let me say it again. If I'm honest about it, and I think about all of those times when my very soul could have been required of me. If I'm honest about it, and I think about all the times that he could have called in everything that he owes me. Because we've heard our pastor preach it from this pulpit. And we've read it in the Bible that the wages of sin is supposed to be death. But the gift of God is what? Eternal life. When I think about how much I owe the Lord, the fact that I owe him my life, I owe him my strength, I even owe him the little bit of joy I might have. And then I put that right next to all the times. And I'm just talking about me that I've knowingly broken his heart. I'm just talking about me. The times I've heard his voice saying, go left. And I played crazy, as my mama used to say. And I've gone right. And then I got a little bit older and I realized, you know what? In my sin, the devil tried to destroy me. In your sin, the devil has tried to take you out. So he can stand in God's face and say, aha. I got another one. Hallelujah. If you don't believe what I'm saying, read the story of Job. The devil is the original hater. When I think about all the times that it could have been me, and all the times God has waited and called and waited until I found my way home. to sing. Draw me close to you. And never let me go. I'll lay it all down again. To hear you say that I'm You are my desire. No one else will do. Nothing else can take your place. To fill the warmth of your embrace. So help me find a way, bring me back to you. You're all I want. You're all I've ever needed. You're all I want. Help me know you are near. You're all I want. You're all I've ever needed. from the Lord. You're all I want. You're all I've ever needed. You're all I want. Help me know you.
know you are Help me know you are Jesus keep me near the cross See there's a precious fountain Thank God it's free to all your healing stream It flows from Calvary's mountain Near the cross Near the cross Be my glory Shall find, he's gonna find rest beyond, gonna find rest beyond, gonna find rest beyond the reef. church now when you said how many hymns do you know and they said who is him amen. amen but those sacred hymns of the church and I've told you all my story how my mom stayed on me about as a child coming up I was getting to know the piano and the keyboard and she would always tell me you need to learn some hymns and I was with the new generation thing at that time and James Cleveland came out with Jesus the best thing, you know, he crossed over into the secular. Best thing that ever happened to me. And you all know he grabbed that song from me. He said, I don't know who Gladys Knight was talking about. He said, but you know what? <laughs> Jesus is the best thing that ever happened to me. Amen. So I was into the gospel thing and my mom said, well, we can do that too. And some of y'all won't say, well, what's he talking about now? Uh, on the Brian, you remember it's the gospel pearl. <laughs> I knew I was going to lose some of y'all on that one. That was another little sidebar hymn book <laughs> that they had had gospel songs in it. They made it called the gospel pearl. And they had the hymn book, which I have still got my hymn book at home. And, uh, and uh, matter of fact, I had those out. We normally do uh, ordained deacons and pastors. We give them uh, Bible, we give them the hymn book, amen. And that's one thing we need to keep a hymn in our hearts, amen. Uh, for in such times like these, the hymns can get us through, amen. Uh, they speak to the soul, amen. And he really got me there. I uh, tried to get myself together before I started here because he made me think about my father. That was his sort of theme song before he preached, George. He do Jesus keep me to the cross. And I hit up. Uh, mm. I had a moment, so y'all excuse me. But uh, yeah, he uh, he sang that song. He, that was his favorite. Amen. And um, I guess I've kind of internalized some of his ways, and I had um. I ride in, I'll give you all the, let y'all peep over my shoulder when I'm riding into Sunday morning. George, I have to put on past me not, old gentle savior. Now, I didn't get up here to preach about him this morning, y'all, but I, I got caught up. I'm sorry. I got, forgive me those you are viewing online, but uh, 
Sometimes we come to worship and we are so timely conscious and we have to keep things on point. But it's good to stop and allow the spirit to have its way. And we are so programmed that sometimes we dehumanize ourselves and we miss out on a whole lot of rich things that God has for us. Amen. We want this. We want that. We pass up so many treasures and just just surpluses of God has things for us. We pass them up, Jay, because we always in a hurry. We're so programmed. I got to do this. I got to do that. But God is saying, look, uh, you crying to me. Don't pass me by. I'm telling you, don't pass me by. Amen. <laughs> uh, so we need to make sure we cling to those. And thank you again, my brother, for taking us there. And I, I warmed by that fire. Somebody might not have received it this morning, but my heart is happy right now. My soul is happy. I thank God for that. Now, lest we hold you on and arrest you any longer, I, I desire for us to turn this morning as we close out Black History Month. I want to share a word, amen, uh, on today from the book of uh, Philippians, amen. Paul's uh, letter to the saints at Philippi. Uh, please ask, ask you to stand and on reading God's word. Philippians chapter 3. And this is not an unfamiliar passage. You'll see one verse in it that might spark your memory. Uh, if you haven't read it, you heard it. Philippians chapter 3, and we want to start reading at verse 13. Say amen if you have it. We solicit your prayers for some of those who are out today. Uh, you get, get a call that one of the uh, members here, we have um, had a family member that's ill today. Amen. So we want to lift up uh, that family in prayer, uh, Trish, and praying for Shanice and her family as well. Uh, Philippians chapter 3 verse 13 and it reads brethren I count not myself to have apprehended but this one thing I do forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus let us therefore as many as be perfect be thus minded and if in in anything ye be otherwise minded God shall reveal even this unto you. Nevertheless, whereto we have already attained, let us walk by what? The same rule. Let us mind the same thing. Amen. You may be seated in his presence. Father, we thank you now for this time on today, Lord, to share the word of truth. Pray now, Father God, that I will arrest Tim Collins, Lord. Speak to me and through me, O oh God. That all of our hearts may God will rejoice and be glad and satisfied, knowing we have been fed by thee, O God, and thee alone. Not of man, but Lord, according to your word. Touch now the Son of Lord that they may repent. Touch the Saint, Lord, that they may be revived. And we bless you now and thank you now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. From the uh, text in which we read on today, verse 16 again says. Uh, and all these things are motions that we see what the Apostle Paul is saying here. Nevertheless, whereunto ye have already attained, let us walk by the same rule, let us mind the same thing. From these verses 13 through 16, I want to talk just this morning from the ending chorus of the song we sang this morning. Amen. Lift every voice and sing. Let us march on. Amen. All right, all right. Let us march on. Let us march on. The Apostle Paul at this time, uh, George, is in a Roman jail, and he's penned this verse to the saints, as I said earlier, at Philippi. Um, of the uh, many reasons as to why he penned this letter to them, one of the main reasons that he was sending this much-needed letter was to encourage them uh, to continue on in the faith. In other words, continue marching on, moving forward. As we know that it's documented, it's well known that during this time, the Christian movement was constantly under attack by Judaizers and others that said, well, all this stuff is foolishness, Jesus Christ, he's dead. And they thought that was the end of that. But here it is, the Christians are still meet, meeting. And as we know, there was persecution spread abroad. And some decided to call it a day and go back to their old ways, amen. Dangerous when things have come and, uh, to our lives and we said we're walking with the Lord and we decide to call it a day because things are not working out for us very good. We're having issues. We're having uh, problems that now have come on board. Look like our ships are filling up with water. We're about to sink. And some have just thrown up deuces, uh, Sean, and said, that's it. I'm out of here. Uh, Y'all can have this Christian walk. But thank God for those of us who have endured. Amen. 
The Bible said that those who endure shall be saved at the end. Amen. Thank God for the grace that he gives us. Amen. And the strength that even though we want to, we want to pull up them deuces, we said, no, 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 God been too good to me. I'm not finna call it a day right now. Amen. So he penned this letter to continue on faith. But I find it rather interesting that here this brother is in the circumstance, the predicament that he was in, being in jail, amen, in a prison, that is somewhat difficult for us to receive such a word where the theme of his book is joy. Someone talking about joy as being locked up in prison. Uh, somehow that just doesn't make sense, Jay, that you're talking about joy and you're incarcerated. You're, you're being held hostage. You're being under arrest. Again, for something that he wasn't really guilty of, other than he was guilty of what? Preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. <laughs> so he's now in jail. He's in a lockdown situation. But it's, it's difficult sometimes to receive that word uh, from the writer, considering his trials uh, being much bad and almost in the same predicament that we're in. We are going through trials. And did you hear someone who's going through similar trials and yet they'll tell you, George, that you need to rejoice? <laughs> It's difficult for us to receive that. But uh, when you realize the Apostle Paul and who his chief editor is uh, uh, in this writer's life, then we come to know Christ, then we come to know joy. Amen. We can have joy in sorrow. We can have joy when we're going through various trials. We can have joy in our sickness. We can have joy in our troubles because we have the joy of the Lord is our strength. Amen. Knowing that he is with us, that he'll never leave us nor forsake us. It's not so hard and difficult when we're going through knowing that the Lord is is with us and that's the joy that Paul had here in this lockdown plus predicament that he was in knowing that God was still with him amen giving him the strength uh, that he needed every day I was riding in and not only did I play past me not but I put on the blood too as well the blood that gives me strength from the, I guess I'm preaching to myself amen the blood that gives me strength from day to day. Amen. That's what helps keep us going, Chloe. Amen. In spite of what the enemy tries to do in your life and mine. So Paul, he gives them this letter to encourage them in the faith to keep on marching on. It's interesting that the Apostle Paul, he realized something here that in spite of their persecution and the suffering that they were going through and that he was going through, yet they were still what? marching on. Amen. So that's a word for us today as we pull now from the Apostle Paul, his personal testimony, amen, to the saints at Philippi to encourage them. That is encouraging knowing that here's someone who is in a lockdown position in jail, but yet you still have joy and you continuing on in the faith. That is encouragement. I, 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 Dr. Hoskins, Dr. Hoskins, she's a member of Antioch Fellowship and back in 19, whatever that was, <laughs> three or four, amen, it was in the 90s. I know that we were having Sunday school joint class that Sunday. Uh, this is something that we did. We did, uh, everybody did individual Sunday schools. But then on a certain Sunday of the month, George, we would all come together in the sanctuary and have one joint uh, Sunday school session and with one speaker. And she was on to speak that morning. She did her prayer. And after she got through praying, she said, you all need to realize that there are more people in jail that are freer than some of you all walking around. And that, that's what I did too, Sean. Thank you. That caught my attention. I was like, wow. But she said a, a very profound word there to all of us because we need to realize something, that there are people who walk around, think they're free, but actually are not. They're still locked up. Amen. But how, how many of you are glad to know that even when you're going through some situations and circumstances that you're pressing on and that gives you that freedom by the grace of God that even though the enemy think he got you locked up and locked down, look, I'm free. Because Jesus said, uh, who you, the son sets free is what? Free indeed. So Paul said, look, I don't want you all to feel like you're being harassed in a lockdown position, even though they're persecuting you. But let me go ahead and share a word to you, brethren and sisters. I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind. Those are some good words right there for us to underline. But for the sake of our time and the narrative which I'm sharing on today, go ahead and underline that forgetting those things which are behind. So all... 
Paul was saying to us today, what he was saying to us through his testimony uh, and encouragement words to all of us today, words of encouragement and edification that he desired to share. When we are marching on, when he said, let us march on, Miss Lord, is that this right here. We need to have a march that's what? A move toward progress. A move toward progress. You, you can't make progress when you're still setting still. Oh, my God, I said something to somebody, and y'all lost all that. You can't make no progress when you're still sitting still, and neither can we make progress when we're still dealing with things in the past. Oh, my God, help me, Lord Jesus. I ought to get an amen. Here's some thank you, baby. Somebody clapping. We ought to be can't make progress when we're dealing with things, Erica, in the past. Uh, the Apostle Paul said, in spite of all my accomplishments, he never thought that he had arrived. Oh, my God, let me go ahead and drop Drop this off because y'all, this is something this is powerful. He didn't evaluate his life, mama, based on earthly and worldly things like some of us do. Some people get so caught up their heads in the cloud. I think they can tell y'all when the rain coming, when the sun is out. Y'all, y'all missed that. You'll get it on your way home. But see, some folk think they have arrived. Think they got it going on. Can't nobody tell them nothing, Sean. You can't tell them nothing. Look here, don't step there. You got to fall in the ditch. Go ahead, fool, fall in the ditch. I told you. you Get your head out the cloud, you mean? Y'all ain't in here. He said, look, I don't evaluate my life on what I've done. Let me slow down and see if I can break this down. See, see, some people you go around, all they do is want to boast and brag about RB, what they have done. See, when you get around folk, you need to be mighty careful because, see, that's what gets up in a bad predicament, flow. See, when you get to talking about what you have done and all these accomplishments you make, it causes us to cling to worldly stuff and lose our focus on moving forward. How can you move forward when you're still talking about right now and the past? My eyes are fixed on the... Come on, come on, y'all talk to me in here. Uh, he, he didn't evaluate his life on that. Uh, it, it's a hard thing when people get hung up on what I've done and giving all themselves the accolades and they're not careful to give God the glory. Uh, a story was told, this, I, I was at this uh, National Baptist Convention. Uh, I was there, and they were having uh, uh, a late night service. That's something old. They've been doing it for years. Uh, they put two preachers on. They start at 10 o'clock late night, and they have one preacher preach. They have another preacher preach. I think they started at 9, two, 9. Now they probably moved it up a little bit. So anyway, uh, they, they have one preacher preach, and they have another preach. So this preacher was preaching this night, and we were in uh, Kansas City. Yeah, I'll never forget that because that's like, Lord, I mean, that's another story. Uh, we were in Kansas City, and this pastor, he's from Mississippi. But he's pastoring in Minnesota, and his nephew came up to visit him during the summer in Minnesota. He's from Mississippi. He said, hey, nephew, we're going to kick it. We're going to hang. He said, yeah, Unc, I'm glad to be here, but I got to show y'all something. So he got the family going. They said, what you got? He said, let me put your DVD on. He put his DVD on. He said, man, check this out. He put a DVD player, and it was him and his team. They won the state championship, and his unk, his nephew was the running back. No, no, he's the wide receiver. So he said, he said, he said, he said watch this, watch this. He'll play right here to won the game. So he goes around, he catches the ball, and he wins it. Jubilation everywhere. Everybody just shout, just happy and happy. And he said, oh, you just don't know how that made me feel. We won that football game because I caught the ball. You just don't know how that made me feel. He gave him a high five. He said, nephew, I'm proud of you, man. I'm glad y'all won the state championship, showing off his bling, bling, his ring. You just don't know, Unc, how that made me feel. So anyway, he said, all right, nephew, well, hey, man, sell down. You're going to church me Sunday, right? Oh, yeah, Unc, I'm going. I'm going. So anyway, long story short, the next day, pastor comes downstairs and he hear all this noise, and, and his nephew down there watching the same DVD that he played on yesterday. And he says, it's a nephew. He says, son, what you doing? We got a lot of stuff to do today. He said, I just had to look one more time, because uh, you just don't know how that made me feel. You just don't know how that made me feel. I, I, I helped us to win the state championship. He said, all right, nephew, come on. Shut that down. We got things to do. So he let him go. He said, next morning, he got up. He said, no, okay, everything's good. He left, he came back home, going home, nephew sitting right there, George, in front of the TV again. He said, nephew, you still playing that DVD? Unc, you just don't know, man, how that made me feel. He said, all right, nephew, all right, all right. We, look, we're going to church tomorrow, man. Look, look, you need to go to bed. We're going to church tomorrow. So anyway, they go to church. Service went great. So on the way home, nephew was in the back seat, chilling and everything. All of a sudden, nephew taps his uncle on the show. He said, Unc, tell me something, man. He said, how come all you preachers, whenever y'all preaching, you get rid of clothes, as you call it. Why you already got to say, he died, he rose, he got up the third day morning, all power in his hand. 
Pastor said he pulled the car over immediately when he asked him that question. He put it in park. He looked back at him. He said, nephew, you just don't know how to means to be. Hallelujah. See, some of us, we need to understand it's not about us. You can't be bragging about what you've done when we think about what the Lord. You need to tell somebody you just don't know how it make me feel. <laughs> Can't go on and Paul said, look, I, 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 I can't brag and boast about that. I have not apprehended. In other words, we need to, when, you, when you hear what he's saying, I know we started here in the midst of this conversation. Verse 10 and all those leading to this, this explained what he's talking about. Because he wanted to come to know the Lord and the power of his resurrection. He wanted to be closer to the Lord. And he said, everything I have done, all these things I've gained, I count them as waste. I count them as dug. Because they're nothing. Because I really haven't got the real thing that I desire the most. But Jesus said this word here about renewed focus, keeping our focus. He said, look, no man having put his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. In other words, putting our hand on the plow and stopping and looking back. And you can't really plow a field straight if you're not looking straight. Because if you're looking back, you're going to end up with what? Crooked lines. So he said, nobody is fit for the kingdom of God going forward if you're looking back. So we need to make sure that we are keeping our minds renewed. Amen. That's why the Bible tells us in Romans that the, but I beseech you, my brothers, by the mercy of God, that you uh, uh, present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God. And be not conformed to the things of this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of our minds. In other words, there ought to be searching for God to renew us every day, to give us a new onlook on life as we press and march on. He said, look here, you need to have a, you have a new focus first, but also we need to learn how to, as Paul put it, reach forth. Uh, Paul said, I'm reaching forth unto uh, those things that uh, before me, for what's before me. The imagery here, my brothers and sisters, is what Paul is saying here and what he's doing, the overall thing here, just to explain to all of our permissible games, I can tell you all the word, but a better word we understand here in, in our United States is the Olympics. He, 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 he loved the Olympics. He loved to see the track runners and all that. Some of that was his main thing, seeing the track runners running around the track. And that's what his, the illusion here and the imagery is that he's talking about someone that's running track. The imagery of, of liking them to the runners in a race that uses every muscle and ounce of their being, their strength, everything in them. They're putting it in full gear. Some of you all ran track in here. Some of you all are athletes. Uh, uh, I was semi athlete. I, I did some athletic things, but I, I didn't. Get all the other stuff. I was bad stuff. But anyway, well, um, he said this is like someone putting everything into it, Jay, in that last heap of the race. That means you you are stretching out. You, you, you put everything into it. Every ounce of that working out, those muscles, all the lifting weights, you putting everything into it. You are literally stretching and reaching down in the gut to say, I got to win this way. I got to win. He said that's what he's doing. He's reaching forth. In other words, you can't, we can't run our race holding on to things in the past. In other words, that's what I'm saying. We got to let some stuff go. That's what he said, forgetting those things which are behind me. Because when you're trying to grasp on to it, we can run our race effectively, hanging on to some past junk, some past mess. In other words, we got to let some stuff go and put our all into it. That's all he's saying. He said, uh, 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 I'm reaching forth. I'm reaching forth. So it's a march toward progress. But also, it's a march toward the prize. Hmm. Like a runner in the race, that, that white line here that's on the ground, they see. That's their mark. Paul said, I press toward the mark of the high calling. That's that mark that they see. That's, that's that mark. That, that's the, the, the ultimate prize, the cross, that finish line. And, 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 and our mark today, every Christian should be what? That mark is to what? Heaven. For us to cross that finish line and one day him say, well done, thy good and fearful servant. And we know the only way that we can be able to cross that line and to cross in is through Jesus Christ. I don't care how nice you are, how good looking you are, what kind of car you got, what kind of house, that doesn't mean nothing. If you have not confessed Christ, then your race, your race and your running everything you're doing is in vain. I'm, I'm sorry. I, that it is. And the only way to, to, to tell them is through Jesus Christ. And Paul says that's his goal. 
In other, in other words, uh, uh, to make it in, I've got to march to his orders. Where he leads me, I will follow. In other words, uh, to, 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 to be more like Jesus, uh, to come to know him, uh, and, and to be more like Jesus, that I may know him. He said, I've got to march to his orders. So if we are following his directions, then he is constantly in our view. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. If we're following the Lord, we're running, chasing after him, as they say in so many words, that he is constantly in our view. So that means he's our mentor and our motivation. Uh, 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 <laughs> oh, my God. To be more like him, that means we're imitators and desiring to be like him. That means we need to have that image in front of us. We need to have that focus in front of us so we can continue on our race, that we can reach our mark, that we may receive our prize. Um, that was this episode of, of Normal Power uh, back in the day. Some of y'all probably remember about Normal Power. Normal Power. Some of y'all do? Okay, he, he was crazy, wasn't he? I don't know who's more insane, him or, uh, him or Sergeant Carter, but fooling with him, amen. Sergeant Carter used to get always worked up, amen, uh, 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 dealing with Norma Powell. Uh, but it always seemed like Norma's, uh, his, his mishaps and his stupidity and everything he would do would come out and be the right thing at the end. <laughs> it, it was crazy, but there was this one episode where Norma hadn't passed the uh, test to become get his full rank or whatever, he's going to be private first, whatever. And uh, everybody else in, in, under Sergeant Carter's command had done it and passed the test, but Goma hadn't. And Goma studied hard, and he was telling his buddy and his friend, I don't know what I'm going to do. You know, i got to pass that test. I want to make Sergeant Carter happy. I don't know what I'm going to do, what I'm going to do. So Goma had an idea. So he went in there, and he had the proctor up there and told him, here's the test, and I need for you all to make you stay on point, nobody cheating. To your desk, same thing we do. Some of us we do the test, and they lay the test out them take the test. So while Gomo was taking the test, all of a sudden he reaching in his top pocket. He pulled out something, he looked at it, put it back in there, then he finished writing his test. So the proctor happened to look up and see him doing this and just kind of like, mm -hmm, I got you. You cheating, you didn't fail. Okay. So he let him go on, finish the test like everybody else. So at the end, when he got done, he everybody returned the test and he said, No, you stand on to the side, let me see you. And everybody else he let him march out. He said, Okay, come on, give me that cheat sheet. He said, what are you talking about? He said, I want that cheat sheet. You were cheating on the test. And you know what that means. That, that, you can get kicked out. I mean, you cheat. You, 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 you're done. He said, I wasn't cheating. Yes, you were. As I was watching you. He said, give me that paper that's in your top pocket. He said, oh, you're talking about this? And he went and whipped it out. It was a picture of Sergeant Carter. <laughs> Grinning. He said, why do you have a picture of your sergeant in your pocket while you're taking this test? Oh, no, I'm say, well, that's my motivation. I wanted to make sure I saw Sergeant Carter, and every time I see him, I think about him hollering at me and busting at me, and I wanted to have him while I was taking that test, but that was helping me to pass my test, and he passed. See, all I'm saying is that make sure we keep Jesus, amen, somebody, in the forefront of our lives, and it helps us when we're moving toward, amen, that prize at the end. Uh, but not only is a prize, it's a march of a prize, but it's also a march toward perfection. March toward perfection. He says, as many be perfect. And that word perfect here means mature. Because none of us will reach perfection on this earth. He said, as many be mature, be thus minded. And if there's anything else that we fall short of, and that's all those words right there in your Bible, uh, God will reveal it, and that's what the word says, will show it to us at that time along the way. So Paul's goal was to know Christ to become more like him. And he said, I haven't reached my mark. I haven't arrived yet, but I'm still marching forward. Now, none of us as Christians in here have arrived. We have not attained. We have not apprehended that, that prize crossing over. We are hoping to get there one day, but we're in the, while in the process of marching forth, we need to make sure that what's presented here and what others see uh, in us is authentic. That's all he's saying here. Look here. I, I, I know, in other words, uh, the reason that, that, that people on the outside in the world frown at us as at Christians is because there are a whole lot of fake Christians, Erica, in the church. Oh, my God. I, let me say it again. There's a whole lot of fake Christians in the church. You're saying that you're Christian, but from your walk and from your march and your talk, 
you're not a Christian. In other words, all I'm saying is that what Paul said, we need to make sure that we be real with ourselves and realize that our work is not done. All of us stand in room of what? Improvement. We all still got some work to do. And that's all Paul said. In other words, Erica, wherever you are with your walk with the Lord, continue on with that. But desire to grow and know more. In other words, and when you get to a snare, a stopping point, rely on God to show you what's, what's going on and to take you further in your walk. All I'm saying here is all Paul is saying here to us today, that we all stand in need of improvement. We're not to argue about doctrine and where you are and all this stuff. I don't know where you are. You know about your relationship, flow between you and the Lord better than I do. I can't stand here and be judgmental. Amen. I'm trying to work on Tim Collins. We're all on our way somewhere, but how we get there, we need to rely on his divine guidance and keeping. That's all Paul was saying. When you all read the word, don't make them so hard. Amen. And y'all say, what's well, so you for, pastor? Amen. But <laughs> you all here to the read, amen, and study. But that's all he was saying here today, that we need to be, be real about ourselves and stop putting on this facade in front of them. And let people know that look here, it's because it's hard for you to join church because they see this certain air about ourselves. We need to be just who we are in Christ Jesus. Amen. And because some of us, we can't go in certain neighborhoods because of the way we are. But some of you all who've been saved, you've been there, you know how to go back as a saint. Yeah, yeah. Oh boy, y'all better let that digest. Certain folk, I know I can't go to I call Sean. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Keep it on the rail. You know what I'm saying? Keep it real. But we, we can't. There are certain ones, you know, that, that, that have you have the dialect to talk to them, and then there are certain ones you have to go, hey, I need your help or something. I got this person I'm trying to talk to, a whole lot like you. Can you help me out how to connect with them? And get, yeah, I don't want to talk about them. There are certain things, but, but God will use us in that regard and to that degree. And, 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 and because of that, that's why Paul says he's still pressing to reach that mark due to what? His own deficiencies, his own inabilities, his own uh, flaws where he is. He said, God is still working on me. He said, but yet I'm still marching forward. Uh, come, come in, come in. Let me, let, me, let me share this with somebody. Some of you all probably going to have an issue with what I'm about to say, but I'm going to say it. Um, this is Black History Month. Can, can I just be real, straightforward right now? Uh, I, 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 I want to get this across. I, I'm, I'm black through and through. I, I, I don't I have no say so, Sean, about how my, how my, my, my color, my skin, my family. This is what God blessed me to have this soul. This soul is in now. This is the house I dwell in earth. This is God's doing. I love it. I thank God for it. I ain't trying to change nothing about Tim Collins, but I thank God for it. But I have to understand because of the God whom I serve, I understand I keep things real. And I understand reality, amen. And I also understand this right here. This is what I want to throw on us. I know that we march toward equality. And I know we march through ending racism. But here's a news flash for all of us today. Racism will never end in this lifetime. I, I, thank you, JJ. Somebody know I'm going. I have no problem with Black Lives Matter. But don't allow it to be on one scale and not on the other. It's a problem with me, Erica, that, that, that black lives matter when it's another color of a skin. But your own for our own for killing each other every day. Nobody's marching. Now I'm gonna go ahead and flip the other side. Let's go ahead and flip the other side. Uh, 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 it's interesting that we want to take out. Uh, politicians and, 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 and the political leaders want to take out AP African American history when African American history and heritage is part of country, this country's history. If you're going to cut that out, why not cut out Ku Klux Klan too? Uh, Y'all in here? Why not cut out some other things that you got to, but yet you're putting Jim Crow laws in disguise and think we're crazy and want us to swallow that. Who ever heard, I was talking about uh, Odell Morgan, y'all know how crazy he is. Lord have mercy. He's still crazy. I was talking to Odell the other day, I said, man, this is crazy. I, I, I don't get that, man. A hot summer day, 
I said, and we both agreed this ain't number Jim Crow laws. I'm sorry, if y'all read, y'all hear this, I'm still gonna say, y'all know my ad, y'all, y'all know the address, but y'all know how to find me. It's a number on there, call me. <laughs> I, I might call you back. Oh, no, uh, you got it. <laughs> I'll tell you who to talk to. Uh, how you gonna have a line, Erica, knowing it's hot outside, and, and, and say, you can't bring no water to the voting poll? And I, I had to stop for a minute, and, and long, long ago as it's been put out, they, they had all these crazy things in place that you can't eat in line, you can't drink water in line. And I had to really think about it, JJ, from this standpoint. I said, what elementary mind person would come up with that? And these are people that are paid to be in a position, voted in, to look out for the well-being and the welfare of the people. But yet you can think about some grandmother, some elder person, or somebody who's sick yeah. that has to have the yeah. hydrate, has to, and out in the sun, want to go do their, 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 their justifiable their right yeah. to do the vote. And you're telling them, if you stand in this line, you can't have no water. Who would do something like that unless you're looking in here to see what the percentage of this America's country is that's dealing on welfare and that's, that this moment is sick the most? Are you doing this for a certain reason to cut out some votes? But yet, we march on. Now, I don't want to lose nobody. Because like I said, racism is not going to leave. But understand, we still march on. Why? In order to remove the bite. Like I said, it's not going to go away. It's going to be here. There's always going to be hatred, Ms. Floyd. There's there, there going to be something that's going to teach hatred. It's always going to be in the Bible. Jesus said, the poor you're going to have with you always. In this life, he said, you're going to have tribulation. I mean, it's going to be hatred. It's going to be racism. It's going to be all kinds of crime and corrupt stuff in this life. He said, we're going to have, he said, but don't you be troubled with that because I've already overcome it. And I, I read my, I told y'all about taking away the bite. See, some of y'all sitting there looking at me, y'all know what I'm talking about. Can we go Bible deeper? Y'all read the book of Daniel. If the Lord will allow his servant, his prophet, to go to sleep in a hungry lion den, don't you know the Lord will take care of us when we keep marching on and doing what God has called us out to do? Yeah, a lion can't hurt you, George. If he ain't got no teeth, you take away his paws, but don't miss this, he's still alive. Yeah. But he is not no longer what? A threat. A threat. Yeah. And see, that's the resistance that we have. Racism is always going to be here, but as long as we keep marching to take away the fight, it can no longer be a threat. Yeah. And that's what the opposition is trying to keep it in place. In place. Wants to keep a people of color down. But yet we march on. We don't stop. The cause is still there. And we continue on. But God is able, again, as I said, we keep marching and looking forward to take away those things. Hatred will still be here. Death, taxes, crime, all those things will be here. But I know of a place. Woo! Come here, stable singers. Ain't nobody worried. Ain't nobody crying. Anybody want to take you there? Amen. I'll take you there. How do we get there? Through Jesus Christ. This is what Paul is desiring. I want to go to that place, but in the process, i got to continue marching on. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. My time's up. My time's up. But not only is it a march toward perfection, but also, Erica, we march as partakers. 16, he said, nevertheless, where to we have, we, he gets away from him talking about all things he's done. He said, we have already attained let us walk by the same rule. Let us mind the same thing. In other words, we are all partakers. We are partakers of Christ's suffering. His suffering. The Bible tells us in 1 Peter 4, 12 and 13. It says, beloved, think not strange concerning the fiery trail which is to try you. In other words, we're going through these things. Don't think strange of this. He said in verse 13, he said, but rejoice in as much as ye are partakers of Christ's suffering. So Paul is saying to us that wherever we are in our walk, we all need to be what? On one accord. On one accord. Let us walk under the same rule, the same mind, the same thing. In other words, unified in our walk. We might not always agree when it comes to the things of this life. But we should stand and we should be, must be unified in our efforts to be what? Become more like Christ. In other words, we need to be more like Christ by loving one another. 
Loving those that hate us and despite us, Blessing them when they curse us. We ought to be more like him in that regard. He was humble. He humbled himself and gave of himself. We, 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 we are desire, desire. We should be marching forward to have, do what? To forgive as Christ has forgiven us. Amen. I know that one won't go too far. Even some of y'all in here. Amen. You should have more amens. We need to learn how to what? Forgive as God and Christ has forgiven us. Amen. Yeah. So uh, we ought to forgive others, but also we ought to have a desire to see souls saved and added to the kingdom. These things to be more like Christ. Oh, how I want to be more like him. Amen. Amen. When you read the Bible here, Paul says, look here in the second chapter. He said, let this mind be in you. That was also in Christ Jesus goes on to say how he humbled himself and became a servant unto us. In like manner we need to humble ourselves and be a servant unto him. I heard Brian singing uh, when he was talking about this song when the Lord tell him to go left or go right he go the opposite direction. Amen. We need to learn how to be more humble and trust God. Amen. Leave the consequences to him. Amen. Do what he says and follow his lead. Amen. That's the part of marching on. When you think about a group marching together they're unified. They're all moving in the same direction for a purpose. I, I, I want to close this morning by sharing this, talking about let us march on. My personal encounter when I was in high school, JJ, they had um, started desegregation, had started. And I was back in the sixth or the seventh year when it started, when I finally got to high school. And I ended up going to a white school. And they bused us to this school. Hmm. And it was many miles from my house, mama. And I went out there uh, this summer, the summer prior to my going there, the band director, who was white, he came to my job. He knew that I had enrolled at the school and I was coming there. We had a choice. I could have gone to Hamilton, the neighborhood school, if I wanted to go in auto mechanics or something like that. B, I could have gone and done that. But I, I, I chose to go and go to the school they assigned me to. And I, I went to this school. And in the process of me going, I was a band student. I told you all I had athletic background, but I was a band student. And I chose to stay with music, Erica, which was the wise choice. And uh, I, I went there, uh, and uh, he, he auditioned me, and I went to the summer band program. But when school started, things, the whole thing changed. Mm. Summer band camp, wasn't nobody there but band students. School starts, everybody was there. So there were some late night hours or late evenings that I had to stay over because I was in an extracurricular activity. I was in band. But in the process, there was a group of us, just a subgroup of us that was in the band that were blacks. And we had to walk to the bus stop, which was about a mile from the school. Because during that time, that neighborhood didn't want public transportation over in that neighborhood. So we had to walk low about a mile or so to the bus stop. And it was late evenings. And my first encounter, I almost changed my mind about going to that school. I didn't know what it was going to be like, but I had a friend who stayed in the neighborhood. He's deceased now. He had warned me. He said, man, we, we have problems going to this bus stop. I just want to give you a heads up. I rode a yellow bus in, but I had to ride a city bus back home because it was late. Uh, he said, we're on this bus stop, but we got to stay together. I said, what is he talking about? Nice neighborhood. All of a sudden, we're walking down the street. We got mooned. Some of y'all know what I mean by mooned. We got the names called out. The name, y'all know the name I'm talking about. And we even got egged. Some of them were students who decided we you know, put masks and we know who they were. They come up there, didn't. But also there were neighbors in the neighborhood that didn't treat us very friendly. In other words, there was racist neighbors in the neighborhood. And every time we went to the bus stop, it was one, one of them was right there on the corner of the lady's house. She didn't want to get off my grass. We weren't on the grass. We were on the sidewalk. Y'all know what I'm talking about. To just picking on us, picking on us. But I thought about that. I'm, I'm going to school to try to get my education. I was a music person. I was studying music. I was loving it. But yet I had to go through a whole lot of stuff 
on my way to get what I was desiring to get. I was trying to press my way, amen, somebody, to get my prize. But in the process, I said, thank you, Jesus. I was getting the sermon together. Go. I started getting happy. I said, God, you brought me through all that. And here I am. I had to press rewind because I had forgotten all about it. I didn't think about the danger seen and unseen. I didn't think about the insults, being rejected, called out of my name, but Tim Collins. But in the process, God showed me something. And I hope this is a word of encouragement to somebody today. See, in the process, Sean, when the dust settled, I went on and graduated from Wooddale. But on my way out of Wooddale High School, the Lord blessed Tim Collins along the way. Can I tell you how he blessed me? I ended up getting a whole lot of awards because I could. I was a master of my instrument. I got some medals that mom and daddy said, son, I'm proud of you. You got your cap and gown. But them medals you wear, they look mighty good on you. Not only that, but the God I serve, he blessed me so I struggled in junior high. Hardly could play the instrument, but this man blessed that God put in my life. Helped Tim Collins to get to the point. Not only did I get medals along the way, but God blessed that I ended up being all city, and not only all city, he went statewide. I got an all state band. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying, but yet I had to press my way. Is there anybody here this morning? Know what I'm talking about. But not only let me put the chair on top. Can I put the chair on top? Not only did God bless with the medals, not only did he bless with all city and all state, but God blessed my family that he got to college through school because they called me up and gave me a full ride, a scholarship. Didn't have to pay for nothing. Went to school at University of Memphis. You don't know what I'm talking about. God is able. Just keep pressing. Keep marching on. God will. God will. Be not dismayed. Whatever. Time. God will. I said, God will. Won't he do it? Won't he do it? Won't he will? I said, Won't he do it? I don't hear you. Won't he do it? Let us march on. Let us march on. Don't give up the fight. Don't give up the walk. Just keep marching on, y'all. That was my testimony, but some of you all got some testimonies in here about how the Lord brought you through and how God delivered you, amen, as well. Yeah, yeah. So we are grateful unto God for all that he has done and what he is doing right now. But we just can't thank him enough for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Let us stand on our feet. We extend to you now, my brother, my sister, the hand of invitation. There might be somebody here today that you have not come to know the one who pressed his way for us, Amen. The one who went through the ridicule, the suffering, the shame, humiliation, the rejection. All that he went through that we might have eternal life. But yes, he died, he rose, and he got up, and he lives today forevermore. So we offer him to you today if there's someone here today, amen, that you have not accepted Jesus Christ in your life. Yes, you want to come to know him. Be like Paul. Be determined. Don't let anyone or anything turn you from him, amen, today. He's waiting on you. He's waiting on to you today. If you're here today, we extend to you, my brother, my sister, now. Come by letter, Christian experience, a candidate for baptism. We invite you to come now. Is there one today? Pray, church. Pray, church. Pray, church. Come on. He's waiting. He's waiting. He's waiting on you to cry. He loves you today. He loves you. If there's someone here today you're viewing by, by virtual here, there's a number on the screen that you can call right now. There's a number on the screen, amen, that you can call. Leave a message and someone will call you back. Amen. Brother, we are for Christ. Are you here today? Oh, my sister. What will he do, church? What will he do, church? Won't he give you? He will give you brand new life. New life. Tell him, oh, come, he's waiting. Tell him, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. God bless you, bless you, bless you, bless you. To Christ. Mm. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God, glory to God. We offer Christ, offer Christ to you. Hey, my brother, we, we offer Christ. To you, 
Oh, my sister, we testify today he will. Not only will he give you real life, he will give it more. Oh, I bind the lead, tell him, oh, come. Why don't you come, why don't you come, why don't you come? Tell him, come on, come on, come on. He's waiting on you to take. Ye who are weary and heavy, welcome. You may be seated, you may be seated. Come on. Oh, why don't you come? Thank you now for this time and period in which we're giving, oh God, releasing of these gifts unto you, Lord. I tithe and I offer and thank you for the blessing, oh God, making a way for us to have these gifts, oh God, which we release by faith. We pray now, Lord, that it may be used for the purpose and tip which we release it by faith for kingdom building purposes. Bless now the gift as well as the giver in Jesus' name. Amen. We also have our uh, new daily bread uh, the month February is going to end amen on this week amen Just... the month of um... oh, I'm sorry I got to tell the side I'm sorry my bad I'm telling you wrong I'm sorry talk to your folks I was sitting back there laughing at her <laughs> amen so the month of um, February is going to end I think on Tuesday I believe right is it 20th Tuesday and March will kick in on Wednesday March the 1st amen so these are the new daily bread. So if you don't have one, there's one on the table back here in the back uh, for you to pick up and uh, take with you, amen, prior to your exiting on today, amen. All right, we're looking forward to connecting on Wednesday, amen, on this week on Wednesday night, amen. Looking forward to connect on Wednesday, amen, of this week uh, during our discipleship hour, amen where we're going to go explore and go even deeper into God's word, amen. I encourage you all to read that in chapter in its entirety. Matter of fact, it's only four chapters in the book of Philippians. So in your spare time, go ahead and read it, but put emphasis on chapter three. Hint, hint. Amen. Uh, emphasis on chapter three as we go further into God's word. Amen. So I pray that all of you all have a blessed uh, week. Uh, continue to pray for those members that are out. As I said earlier, uh, there was one uh, sister Trish that was not feeling well this morning, and uh, she's uh, at home amen so we're going to pray for her family and her as well amen so i'm asking you all to continue to pray for her and lift up sister Shadis as well okay i think that was about it we don't have any business with us today amen i still have a few out today well you got your hand up you speaking to me again <laughs> don't add that don't be scared <laughs> All right. Love you all much. And don't forget to pray for the revival. Amen. Uh, some of you all have seen it probably on Facebook, uh, on the Facebook page. If you're on there, uh, the revival is going on next week. Amen. In Memphis, Tennessee, and we switched your prayer. So on Wednesday of next week, uh, we will not have our discipleship hour. So asking you all to tune in. Amen. Uh, nightly. And uh, I guess we'll try to collect the offering. Amen. Prior to that time. Amen. And we are going to represent uh, by a check or something that uh, that fashion, amen, for the revival, because I know we everybody can't be there, but I'll represent for a grace, amen. So I'm asking for us to uh, bring a special offering on next uh, next week, amen, uh, for the revival for next week, okay? All right, all right, all right. Now, I think that was about it, and right where you are, just bow your heads. Father, we thank you, Lord, for your uh, our time on today. We thank you for your power, your presence, your peace in this place on today. Bless now, Lord, as we go forth and continue to march on, Lord, in Jesus' name, Lord. 
Continue lifting up the blood stain banner, Lord, sharing the good news of Jesus Christ throughout this world, our country, our neighborhoods, Lord, wherever we are, that all may come to come into the marvelous light and the hope and the salvation of Jesus Christ. Grant your grace as we travel to and fro, Lord, our various destinations, and we continue to bless your holy name. Now may the love of our Father and Savior Jesus Christ, sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, continue to rest, rule, and abide in us now and forever. Amen. Amen. Y'all be blessed. Love you all.